Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It's going to be an awesome day in the Lord. Amen. As you join on, oh my goodness, I know you need encouragement. Holy Spirit's been telling me. And so Holy Spirit is going to encourage and strengthen you. Amen. Is that not super awesome? Hey, Katie. So good to see you. Hey, Eva. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And while I see Katie on here, I'm just now thinking about it. I have got group coaching tomorrow, part four of coming out of the old and going into the new. If you're interested, message me. It's only $15, very nominal fee. Amen. And we're going to, we're actually working on, as Holy Spirit has us working on our self image so that we can walk in deliverance. Is that not super awesome? We have been doing on this broadcast on Facebook Live and on YouTube the Bond Servant series. And God is still doing it. Amen. And so as you join on today, oh my goodness, we're going to continue the Bond Servant series. And Holy Spirit is going to strengthen you. And oh my goodness, as I woke up this morning, I just felt in the atmosphere just this heaviness, this darkness that wanted to sit in against the people of God. And God is going to have me give you such words of truth of Holy Scripture. And God is going to bring hope into your inner man and strengthen you. And He is just really going to encourage you in mighty strength. Amen. And I see a few more people joining in. Thank you so much. Hey, Pam. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Mary. Hey, Delia. Hey, Ellen. God bless y'all. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Debbie. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining in. Hey, Mary. So awesome to have y'all on here. And as we get started, amen, Mary, I will do that. And y'all can, uh, I will pray for people. At the, I will pray at the end of the message. And so also, if you have prayer requests, just message me personally. And while you're on this teaching today, I really want you to just give your full attention to the teaching of truth because Holy Spirit brings scriptures. Holy Spirit combines them, unpacks them, and strengthens you in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And so we're going to look at that today. And I'm telling you, for those of y'all who receive the word of truth and that transformation in your soul, oh my goodness, you're going to have breakthrough. You're going to have clarity. You're going to have answered prayer because that is the God we serve. Amen. And so let us get started in this message. Let us get started with it in prayer. God, we just thank you for grace. We thank you for grace, Father. You are so awesome. You're omnipotent, omniscient. You're omnipotent. And we thank you, God, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever think or imagine according to the power of your Holy Spirit that comes upon us and brings us strength from above. And we thank you, God, that you're bringing such wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for us to comprehend grace, hallelujah, <coughs> and to see, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the power of grace as you strengthen us from above. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, I swallowed <coughs> down the wrong pipe. Let me get some water. Hold on one second. Woo! And we're going to keep praying in Jesus' name. <clears throat> yes, 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 saints of God. Oh, my goodness. You be super excited. Let me finish some more prayer. Amen. Woo! Oh, well, that went down the wrong pipe. And I've got enough pipes. God's given it to me. <clears throat> and so, God, we just bless your name. We just thank you for grace. And that you are going to bring such strength from above to encourage us and bring us hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Eva. Yes, I got super excited. Oh, my goodness. I get super excited when I pray. Can you tell? <clears throat> and as I was taking in, breathing in air, that saliva went down the wrong pipe. And, oh, my goodness, I wanted to finish this prayer because I absolutely love to pray. And listen, saints of God, as we get into this message today and God unpacks it, I am telling you, Holy Spirit is going to give you such a grace that you are going to want to pray, 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 and pray some more. There is just going to be a grace of prayer over you, as it says in Scripture in Zechariah 14. Amen. And so let us get into the Word of God 
as we continue to pursue the bond servant and we're doing the bond servant series and God is going to bring us an extraordinary grace, especially to understand the peace of a bond servant. Amen. The peace, P E A C E of a bond servant. But what is interesting is because we can see this in two dynamics, the peace of a bond servant, P E A C E is the peace P I E C E of a bond servant. One of the strong noticeable traits of a bond servant one of the things that denotes a bond servant is they will walk in great peace and undisturbed peace and that is what the focus is going to be today and god is almost like giving the examples and for you to analogize it with it's like <clears throat> when you take something and you look at it and you look at it at, with a magnifying glass <clears throat> It brings it up to a higher vision, right? There's more resolute ability to see that thing at a closer image, right? But what about putting it under a microscope? Oh my goodness. When you take the same thing and you make it even smaller and you put it under a microscope that amplifies our ability to perceive the reaction that is going on in that microscopic glass, right? And that is what God is going to do about peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, today. He is going to bring you a microscopic view of peace because one of the things that denotes a bond servant is they will be very skilled in peace. And when I say skilled, it means that they will have practiced it over and over and over that it becomes a part of who they are amen one of the things that you learn as i've been in social work i have a master's and master's in social work as well as my law degree and a health and wellness coaching certification one of the things that i learned as a social worker is there is an emphasis on learned behavior one of the reasons that i went into the avenue of social work is i believe that the environment affects the person where psychology is more related to the person their id and ego and super ego which i also refer to actually in this new book but i love the thought process and the mindset as it relates to the conscious and the subconscious mind and even the unconscious i love the thought process of the fact that the social environment the environment affects the person and as we come into the knowledge of christ jesus we're going to come into a greater fruitfulness of holy spirit and the strength of god's word where he brings forth a knowledge of the glory of god and who god is to you that he is going to affect your environment he is going to bring about a transformation process amen and so the way that he is going to do that today is through P-E-A-C-E. P-E-A-C-E. So let's look specifically and let's start out in John 14, 27. John 14, 27. And I'm going to read out of my particular translation out of the Amplified Classic. But I'm also going to pull up the Strong's Concordance so we can also get into some of that. And again, it is about P-E-A-C-E. God's peace. And God's peace is a peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, of a bond servant. And again, it is about practice. It is about learned behavior. And a lot of people want to make things so spiritual that we take our own responsibility out of it. Where we can make deliverance spiritual. We can make our maturity in Christ spiritual and we take all accountability responsibility of our portion out of it and we just make it all spiritual and we take all practicality out of it and this is why it's so necessary in my opinion for God to bring those that are gifted and skilled by education and by Holy Spirit through the Word into the body of Christ Jesus because they bring out this point of responsibility and accountability. 
And that is what we're going to look at specifically today with a bond servant. Amen. So we're going to look at John 14, 27, and we're going to land in that area. Now, I love John 14, and I love all the way through John 17. Some of my favorite scriptures, all of y'all know John 1, 1 through 18 is like one of my favorite go-tos. 1 Corinthians 2, Ephesians 3, 16 through 21, Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, Isaiah 11, 2 through Five. Y'all know that some, those are some of my favorite scriptures, but oh my goodness, some of my favorite chapters of the Word to just read over and over and over again, besides the book of James, is John 14, 15, 16, and 17. Because I just think about Jesus' last time with the disciples and how He is just pouring out into his disciples and he is giving them so much gold nuggets so much wisdom from above from the father and this is just like his heart being poured out for them to take in the last supper to take in that last meal with the savior amen as he prepares them for what is to come after and what is he truly preparing them for he is preparing them to be a bond servant because we will see in John 15, which comes after John 14, amen. In John 15, 15, he says, I no longer call you servant, but I call you friend. And this is where we're going to see where that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, which brings you into that bond servant. And we will call it today specifically, hey friend, hey Sherry Stedham. We will call it skilled friend. We will call it skilled friend. So God brings you into that skilled friend as you are a bond servant and you have walked in his peace. And that is your litmus test of friendship. And those of y'all who know me know I'm really big into numbers and Holy Spirit shows me what numbers mean. I do not look at books and what books say that numbers mean, what authors say that numbers mean. I just go by what Holy Spirit tells me. And he always tells me through scripture and that is when God told me, Robin, 15 means friendship. And I wrote about this in detail in my last book, Rev 22.2. And I wrote about two to three chapters or two and a half chapters on friendship. So let's look at John 14. And by the way, 14 means faithful. Faithful. So let's look at John 14. And we're going to get into John 14.27. And we're going to get into this undisturbed peace. Amen. Undisturbed peace. And we're going to look at specifically starting in verse 26. Verse 26. Because there's an unpacking of truth to bring wisdom. So that we know how to walk in that undisturbed peace. Amen. Hey Gina. So let's look at verse 26. John 14. But the comforter, counselor. Helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. Ding, 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 ding. Now, this is going to be the emphasis today, amen. He will teach you what? All things. He will teach you all things. And he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, and bring you into remembrance of everything that I have told you. Now, we're going to read that again. Amen. Hey, Deborah. But the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. In my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you. Here it is again. He will teach you what? All things. Amen. And he will cause you to recall and will remind you of and cause you and bring to your remembrance everything that I have told you. Now, this is so important. Before we get into John 14, 27, for us to unpack this, because a lot of people do not even understand quite as much because of our own mind bringing a hindrance 
a lot of people do not understand this scripture and they try to work things out in their mind themselves. Now, this is where God is going to bring you distinguishing, hallelujah, ability to distinguish between that which is accountability that He has put on us and that which is the Father's work through Holy Spirit. Amen. So, this is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, my goodness. If you have friends especially new Christians that they need to get this are people that seem to be in the same ditch over and over and over. Send this teaching to them because they're going to get so much understanding. So God is going to distinguish today our accountability, right, between the work of the Holy Spirit. And so he's going to be able to show you, look, this is what you is your part and this is God's part. Amen. Because one of the things that really set me free, and Sherry Stedham knows me, and so does Dina, and I have told them at different times in their lives, Sherry Stedham remembers this from years ago, and this was something that Holy Spirit brought to me from the Father that really just set me free. And God just said, He said, Robin, let me bring you some freedom. He said, you're not Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I said, what God? And He said, yes, you're not Holy Holy Spirit. <laughs> so you don't have to try to be Holy Spirit for other people. And I said, God, tell me more. He says, Robin, you're not letting me do the work that the Father has sent me to do. Holy Spirit was telling me because you're trying to do my job. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And for all, amen, Dina. And for all of those people that are fixers and having been in social work, that is what I was initially skilled to do also is to fix problems. And so God told me, he said, Robin, you are not Rich's Holy Spirit. You are not your son's Holy Spirit. You have got to step back, get your hands off the situation, and you have got to let me do my work because as long as you're trying to hold the reins, then God is not able to do what God is wanting to do. Amen? And this is where we can hinder the work of Holy Spirit not only in our lives, but also in the lives of others. Now, remember, we're talking about in group coaching about the 30, 60, and 100-fold harvest. And God shows us where a lot of people do not walk in full deliverance. Amen, Lisa. Where a lot of people do not walk in full deliverance. And they might get the 30-fold, yes. They might get the 60-fold, but they do not get the 100-fold because they are hindrance. And that is because... We are trying to do God's work and not our work. So this is where Holy Spirit just starts unpacking it. Amen. And so we start seeing it first and foremost in John 14, 26. I'm going to read you the King James Version also. And then we're going to get into the Greek. Amen. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, woo, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Woo! And bring all things, hallelujah, to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so we're going to delineate this and distinguish it by first of all looking at this word comforter. Where Holy Spirit is unpacked right before us and we can see the works of the Father through Holy Spirit. And so the word here for comforter is parakletos, parakletos, and it actually means summoned, intercessor, consoler, advocate, and comforter. Now let's look at this again. This is where my law degree is going to come in, and you're going to be so happy that I went to law school and at least got my law degree for this, amen? So we're going to see parakletos as intercessor, consoler, advocate, and comforter. Amen. Because if we're not careful, for those of us, especially women, because this is just how God designed us, as we have that supernatural connection with our children, we have it in a physiological area, scientifically, along with physics, and we also have it supernaturally in the spirit realm, this connection with our children, and that's just how God designed us, and so we are going to look at the woman and that supernatural connection, physiological connection, physics connection, 
And we're going to see the dynamic with Holy Spirit, with the Father working in us. And we're going to be able to delineate the working of Holy Spirit and then our responsibility, which is different from the work of Holy Spirit, but what we're accountable for, what we're responsible for, amen? And so we're going to see this dynamic expressed through this. So again, Paracletos actually means intercessor, consoler, advocate, and comforter. So let's look at a woman and see the intrinsic relationship she has with her child beginning in the womb. And let's look at that transition as the child is then in this earth, right? Birthday, amen, delivered. And as that child grows up now, oh my goodness, I am just want to, I want to just sit on the other side of the screen. Do you understand where we're headed? Do you understand what Holy Spirit's about to release to us? I want to be on the other side of the screen along with y'all, and I want to be watching this broadcast. Can y'all not wait to see what God is about to unpack for us? Amen. So here, as the child was is in the womb, we have that connection with the umbilical cord, right? And that umbilical cord brings nutrition. That child is in the womb. That child is protected. It is in that amniotic fluid. And it's in that safe place. It's in that protected place. And in that, I know, Lisa, I'm just like wanting to jump out of my skin because I do not know what God is going to say next, okay? But, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to what God is going to say next. I'm just doing this all. Understand, I am doing this all on faith, okay? And I'm hearing the Father as He is speaking to me, and I'm telling you what I'm hearing at the very second I am hearing it, amen? Don't you love faith, amen? And so we see that baby in the amniotic fluid in the womb, and then that baby is having that growth process. So that is a great indication as we come into salvation and we come in, our spirit is born from above, how God just really puts us in that safe place so we are able to mature enough, okay? Enough in that safe place where we are hidden in Christ. And there is just a great analogy, and we see this from the prophet Job, where Job is protected by God from the enemy, right? Now, it doesn't mean that you haven't had difficult tribulations and trials before you meet God, but there is a process in the new birth where there, there is a grace, there is a protection provided by Holy Spirit, and it is for you to mature enough in grace to have the substance needed that you can mature in your Christian walk. And so as a baby is in a womb, there is a time that it is hidden. And that represents, as scripture says, where we are hidden. Hold on, let me put it up. We are hidden in Christ. And that is Colossians 3.3. 3. So we see this in Colossians 3.3. 3. I'm going to keep my place there. And again, this is the process that we're going to look at today for a bond servant. Because a bond servant walks in P-E-A-C-E, -E, and that is part of their P-I-E-C-E, -E, a piece of the puzzle. So if you see the bond servant like a puzzle, a piece, P-I-E-C-E, -E, of a bond servant is P-E-A-C-E, -E, amen? So let's look at Colossians 3.3, 3, and then we're going to come right back here, and we're going to look at, as well, that still John 1426. Amen. So we're at Colossians 3 3. And let me pull, and that's Matthew coming up in the back. He's got a sunburn. So if he comes in and you don't see a shirt on him, just know he's sunburned. Amen. We're all going to get sunburned today. He's got his jacket on. So we're all going to get sunburned. S O N. Woo! Burned today. Amen. So let's look at Colossians 3 3. And let's see what scripture says. Scripture says, 4 as far as the world is concerned, you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. And so we see this transition as we come into that new life, into that new birth of us being hidden in Christ and for God bringing us the sustenance of the word to understand the word in power where we're yielding a harvest of some sort. Even if it's 30-fold. 
At least we're yielding a harvest. And that is a good example of the word of God coming forth and bearing fruit. Where do we see this in scripture? We see it in Mark 4, the sower of seed, that parable, right? In verse 19 and 20, where we see that on the good soil, on the new creation soil, on the new salvation soil, that one which is in that hidden place initially, they are able to receive the word. And where do we see the evidence of that? Because right after that is another parable after the 30, 60, and 100 fold. In verses 21 through 25, we see that Jesus goes into another parable immediately and says, A light, a lamp are brought into a room, not to be put under a table, under a bed, under anything, but a lamp is brought into the room to be put on a lamp stand. The light is brought into the room to be put on the lamp, light stand, lamp stand. So whatever darkness is in the room, guess what that light's going to do? It's going to show you what is hidden temporarily in order to make it known. And why is this so important? Because the word truth in Greek, aletheia, is made of two words, two Greek words, alpha from the beginning and lanthano. And lanthano means that which is hidden, that which is concealed. And so where is the word of God planted? In the new creation, in the new soil, in the new image of the likeness of Christ Jesus. Amen. And we're going to break that down in just a minute. And so in that new image, and what is that new image? That new image is 2 Corinthians 3.18. As we with an unveiled face behold the glory of God is in a mirror, we're being transformed into that image from one degree of glory to another. And so that new image is our new birth. It's our new creation. We have a new canvas. And we see as it relates to a baby in a mother's womb, they're hidden there in order to get what? Some word. Even if it's just a little bit of word. And then as God begins to mature you, like a baby that now is in the earth, they're no longer hidden in that secret place, but they know and have an intimacy with that hidden place. Woo! Oh my goodness, do you hear this? They know, oh my goodness, they know and have an intimacy, hallelujah, with the hidden place. They've been in that womb. They've had a relationship. They've been fed. And they've grown woo, in that womb. Hallelujah. And they remember subconsciously that place. Amen. And that is why when children start having temper tantrums, as I even taught uh, Christopher, because remember, our baby twins, my, gr my grandbabies, are just over a month old. On the 20th, they just turned them one month old. And when they first had those grandbabies, those grandbabies were crying. And Christopher and Miranda were like, what do we do with these grandbabies? They're crying. They could not stop their crying. And I sent them a video and I said, look, what I used to do with y'all when y'all would just go into this crying thing, no matter up to even the age of almost three years old, if it was uncontrollable crying, if it was just all this crazy crying, that you cannot get control of yourself, I would wrap you in a papoose and I would just put you in that tight place and your arms couldn't move and your legs couldn't move. And again, this is a method. So don't just go doing it. Look it up. Do your research. It is a method. So I sent him a video and I said, this is what you do. And it helps with babies when they get this uncontrollable crying. And as soon as they did that, the baby stopped crying and they were totally fine. And it's because that papoose reminds them of the hidden place. So look as it relates to us. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Because you know what's the papoose? Peace! Peace! God's peace is like that papoose that wraps us. Comforter! Woo! Oh my goodness! Do you see this? It is our comforter. Woo! And Jesus, is this not powerful? Oh my goodness. Y'all need to get this out to new Christians. 
and said that 30, 16, 100 fold is sown in the soul, the soil of the new creation. Where's that new creation? It is in our spirit man with our, with our soul, okay? Our spirit man is a new creation and our spirit man brings that comfort that with Holy Spirit because our soul has received the new spirit. And so we have a connection. What? We're body, soul, and spirit. And so we're connected to our spirit, right? And so our spirit in that connection, that anointing of grace by Holy Spirit allows the soil to produce a harvest. And the reason that some people produce 30 fold harvest is because they still have hindrances by which they need to be set free. But glory to God, at least they're producing a harvest. Amen. And so that harvest, even no matter how small it is, it represents us transitioning into a place where God can allow more trials, more tribulations to where we see with Job, the prophet Job, where he the enemy had permission from God to sift him. We see this also in the New Testament in Luke 22 when Jesus tells Simon Peter, Simon, Satan has asked excessively, has asked permission to, uh, to sift you excessively, exceedingly like grain. But I've already what? Prayed for you. You see this identity with Holy Spirit being revealed through Jesus in that Luke 22 scripture. But I have already prayed for you that when you return, you will what? Strengthen the brethren. And so we actually see this transition with Peter as it relates to him being accountable and Holy Spirit doing the work of the Father. Amen. So let's continue as we get before we get to that point. Let's continue in this analogy of a mother with her child. So once the mother has her child, the child is being fed, the child is being brought up, there's still a frequency that is released, a communication between the mother and the child. And I write about this in Rev 22.2 when I talk about Tesla and I talk about frequency and I talk about our DNA and I talk about neurons. And so the baby comes out and the baby is not able to speak, right? The baby is not able to communicate in full words, full language. And so the mother, the way that she communicates is God has given women 13 extra circadian rhythm frequencies. What does 13 mean? 1 Corinthians 13 has 13 verses. 13 means love. And so it's through love. It's through the love of the Father. Where that love is our strength. We are anchored. Ephesians 3, 17 and 18. We are anchored securely, firmly strengthened in the love of Christ. Amen. And so we're going to see now as it relates to our responsibility and to the work of Holy Spirit as we've been looking at John 14, 26. And so the way to do that also is to look at the words that make up Paracletos. The word comforter, Holy Spirit, it indicates advocate, consoler, comforter, intercessor. So let's look at some of those words before we get to the next place. Amen. Oh, wow, Kim, such confirmation. And so let's look at this word comforter. And let's look at the definition of it. Amen. We see it first and foremost is a warm quilt. Amen. And remember the analogy that Holy Spirit gave us about that comfort that God brings us is that papoose, which is peace. Peace is our papoose. When it feels like all hell is going all around us, God wraps us. He comforts us in peace. And what does it do? It immediately brings us control over our person where we have power, love, and we're self-controlled. 2 Timothy 1.7. So this word comforter also means a person or thing that provides consolation. Amen. A person or thing that provides consolation. 
it comes actually from the old French word comforter, which means to comfort. So let's also look at console. Console, and let's break this down. Console means that to bring comfort at a time of grief or disappointment. Now just think about that in itself. You don't need comfort until you're in a place where you need it. Remember when we look at John 11, I mean Luke 11, Luke 11 shows us that Holy Spirit comes according to the need as it relates to our daily bread, right? And so when we see Holy Spirit, He is our daily bread. And so when we need comfort, right? And we know we need it. We're not being controlled, God, in our person. We're out of control. We're chaotic. So God, bring us our comforter. Woo! console us, bring us peace. And again, the sign of that comfort for a bond servant, for a Christian. But remember our aim, our focus, our aim, the prize of the high call is to be bond servant. That's the prize that Paul was referencing with his relationship with the Father and with Christ. Amen. Is to be a bond servant. Why? John 15, 15, that bond servant promotes into a friend. He, your bond servant first, amen. And as you're a bond servant and you serve because of love, you walk in that peace. It's a part of you. It's a piece of your makeup. When you walk in it, you walk in a friendship with God. You know that hidden place, that secret place, amen. And so this word console is actually made out of two words in Latin. It's consolare, con, which means with, and solare, which means to soothe. And so the word that you see, consolare, which makes up console, those two Latin words mean that we're not being soothed alone, but God is soothing us with Him. He is with us in our circumstance. He is not outside of your circumstance and seeing that you're just in the pit of hell. He is with you in that circumstance. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Neither heights, nor depths, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come <coughs> can ever separate you from the love of God. And we see such an unfolding of this in the book of Nehemiah in chapter 1, which I unpack in this manner in God's firewall healing of the soul, session 1, the light. Oh my goodness. And as God has me unpack Nehemiah 1, because in Nehemiah 1, in fact, we're just going to go there to look at that and to get understanding because Nehemiah represents Holy Spirit, right? Comforter. Amen. And we're going to also look at that because Nehemiah represents and means comforter. Now, let me get my Strong's Concordance, and we're also going to pull that up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Is God not just awesome? Look at all the places he's going. And so, Nehemiah in Hebrew means consolation of Yah. Is that not powerful? Because we're looking at Holy Spirit, and again, God is showing us Holy Spirit's work. And our work. And so we're going to see this also unpacked a little bit in Nehemiah 1. I'm not going to get into it as much as my book, as God's Bible, Hill of the Soul Session, When the Light. But we're going to get into a little bit of it just so you have understanding. Amen. And so Nehemiah means comforter, to console. Amen. And so let's look specifically at Nehemiah 1 verse 1. Because this will unpack a lot. Nehemiah 1 Verse 1. Oh my goodness. So here it says in the Amplified Classic. In fact, let me pull the Amplified up. It just pulled up another version, which I do not use that version. I use the Amplified Classic. So here it is in Nehemiah 1 verse, verse 1. The words of the story of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. Now in the month of Kelsev, Keslev, in the 20th year of the Persian king, as I was in the castle of Shushan. 
Now, we're just going to stop right there. And again, I unpack this entire chapter in my book. But we're just going to look at this particular verse because this goes with today's teaching. So again, listen to this verse, amen. The words of the story of Nehemiah, son of Hekeliah. Now in the month of Keslev, in the 20th year of the Persian king, I was at the castle of Shushan. So this is where we're going to stop, right here. It is absolutely amazing. Because Nehemiah, again, means to console, consoler, comforter. That represents Holy Spirit. But he is the son of Hakaliah. Are you ready to hear what Hakaliah means? Hakaliah means Yah of darkness. Oh my goodness. Y'all hold on because you're not going to see it the way that you've ever seen it like you are today. Yah of darkness. And this is, and it's at the time of the month of Keslev. Why is this so important? Because that is the time of light. It is the time of Hanukkah. It is the time of the burning of the menorah. It is the time of the celebration of the light. And a lot of people don't understand this. Again, I'm going to give you, give you a snippet that is in my book. But a lot of people don't understand it because I've worked with people that had dissociative disorders, multiple personality disorders, and whether you realize it or not, a lot of people dissociate. I would say probably about 65% of the people that I know disassociate. They just don't know that they disassociate. And I disassociated when I was uh, gone through an abusive marriage when I was 19 years old. When uh, back a long, long time ago, because now I'm about to be, be 53 this year. And I share that abusive marriage that I was in about nine months and how it literally caused me to disassociate. God is gracious. And I get into that. And I wanted to understand. I wanted to have the logic God, you tell me. I don't want to read no secular book. No other book that says this is what happens when a person disassociates. This is how they integrate. None of those words set well with me. I did not like the word integrate. I just do not like that word. I don't know why. It just does not bear witness to my belly. And so I said, God, I wanted to understand. And it shows in the book of Nehemiah. In fact, we'll go to that particular scripture right there. And this is where God showed me. He literally showed me how... People disassociate, and I get into it in greater detail in that book. So, Scripture says in verse 8 of Nehemiah 1, Remember earnestly what you commanded your servant Moses. If you transgress and are unfaithful, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts were in the farthest parts of the heavens, the expanse of outer space, yet I will gather them from there and I will bring them into the place in which I have chosen to set my name. And when God showed me this, it just blew my mind. And so, Hekeliah, the father of Nehemiah, means in Hebrew, Yah of darkness. Nehemiah means consoler, comforter. And so what we see with the soul, as God had me unpack it back in 2011 is when I started this book series, and I updated it and started getting the books out on Amazon. I'm telling you, they're absolutely phenomenal. And so what happens is, if we have knowledge of darkness, now it doesn't have to mean that we committed sin. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means that we have knowledge of it. So you see this a lot of times with children that have been molested or something that has horrifically happened is they did not transgress by doing the sin, but the transgression was made upon their person. And so they have knowledge of it. And so what God does because of his grace is he allows that part to fragment. That's the best description I can tell you. It fragments and he shuts it down and it's in a place of darkness. And this is where we're going to see Yah of darkness. And you're going to get understanding. Because God is not dark. That is not what it means. But it means that in your darkness, guess what? He is God. Woo! He is comforter. He is counselor. Consoler. He is advocate. He alone. Not us. He alone. Our portion is to trust Him, is to lean on Him, 
It's to read the word. It's to eat the word. It's to get the seeds into the soil. That's our requirement. His requirement is to bring the power of Holy Spirit to finish that work. Amen. And part of that accountability is not just using that as a license to do nothing, but it is to take control over the body. It is to be accountable for your body. So that, because understand the unclean spirit that attacks your person. And again, you have to watch videos before now on YouTube to understand what I'm talking about. Because an unclean spirit, when it attaches to your person, it is always going to attach to the body. It's always going to attach to your emotions, to those hormones and your emotions. And that is why we have to be controlled. And so as Holy Spirit is doing the work of the Father, our leaning on the Word and Him directing our path, Proverbs 3, 3 through 6, where we have mercy and truth, we have kindness, it is bound to our neck. We're not leaning on our understanding, but we're leaning on God, and He's directing our path, and He is making it known. He is giving us favor and high esteem with Him. He is lifting us up. It is this supernatural transaction. Do you see the saints of God? And so what this indicates as it relates to areas in our life where God is bringing a work of that new creation. And that one part is shut off in darkness. And again, I'm not going to get into all of this in great depth today. It's just to give you understanding. And so where we have had knowledge of that sin, we will call that sin spiritual dis-ease. It brings a dis-ease in our spirit, our new spirit that is born from above. It does not witness to our new spirit. It brings a disturbing against our peace. That means it's time for deliverance. It's time for breakthrough because as that door is open to that darkness, that indicates that you have got a communication to the hidden place, to the secret place, the place of friendship, hallelujah, that you're committed to and that God is bringing a frequency, a communication from that place, which is His thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11-13, towards us. And that communication, that supernatural connection of His Spirit with our spirit, amen, that new creation spirit, that communication is bringing a healing. It's bringing a comfort. And that comfort is peace. Woo! Where we feel it in our body. We feel it in our emotions. No matter how much hail is coming against us. No matter all the disturbedness, the chaos we're experiencing. We're willing to let it go. And we're willing to believe in truth. And say, God, I don't care what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing. My new creation self is to trust in you. And is to be a part of your peace. And is to be undisturbed. That is our requirement. Is to commit this body and to dedicate it as holy. And as we consecrate it as holy. And don't let it do whatever it feels like doing. And understand, if you give yourself over to the unclean spirit, to that darkness that is trying to keep that door shut, you have to do more work in the Word. Because you're not going to get the freedom until you cling to the Word. You are a bond servant. You serve the Word. That is your job on this earth, is to serve the Word. It is to serve Jesus Christ. It is to serve Him. And as you serve Him, hallelujah, guess what's going to happen? That friendship is the lamp. Woo! That friendship is the lamp woo! of the sacred place, hallelujah, that you're divinely connected to, the womb of God, where you're hidden in Christ. That is that friendship connection, hallelujah. And it brings you the light of truth. And it brings you 
you break through. And this is where a lot of people continue to just fall into the traps of the enemy because they medicate their dark place. They medicate their darkness. They can do it like I did through alcoholism. They can do it through drugs. They can do it through judging others. They can do it through anger. They can do it through fear. They can do it through anxiety. They can do it through all kinds of issues. But let me tell you what. That is not going to get you through to where the light of God, Yah of darkness, visit your dark place. And this is where we have to look at the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies, the only light behind those thick curtains is God's glory. It is the visitation of God Himself. And that is a representation of our soul. Now, when I say soul to you, soul equals your self-image. You have to get this. You have to understand this. Your soul equals your self-image. So when I say your soul, what I'm really saying is, who do you believe you are? What do you believe about yourself? Your soul equals your self-image. So the thing that is working out its salvation in us, what we're responsible for is our self-image. What is our self-image? What do we believe about ourselves? And this is the transformation process. Now watch this. And let me show you this revelation. Let me show it through you in my life. And then we're going to end this. And we're going to pick up Thursday. And we're going to pick up with verse 27. We haven't even gotten out of verse 26. Out of the first three words in verse 26, have we? And so let's look at this. And let me give you an indication. And so when I was in bondage to alcoholism, it was such darkness. It was so dark. And I had so many issues. I had anger. I had fear. I had insecurity. I had rejection. I had abuse. And this is all, again, from my first ex-husband. Let me clarify that. From my first ex-husband. And my self-image. My self-image, even though I was a Christian, my self-image was so beaten down that I backslid. I backslid from that image of the new creation but understand, I had not tasted the power of Holy Spirit at that time. I did not taste the power of Holy Spirit until Resurrection Sunday, 2002. And I tasted that power. And that power changed me. It totally transformed me. And so, as we look at this and we see areas of my self-image, I was medicating my darkness where I had knowledge of sin that had been committed against my person and some of it I was in agreement with and I went along with and I committed. And so that area, those areas of my soul were fragmented and they were shut behind the doors and they were darkness. They did not have the visitation of friendship within them. They were fragmented and they did not understand friendship with God. Now a lot of y'all are saying, Robin, are we just multiple personalities? You are multiplic you are multiplicitous, multifaceted like a diamond. You are created in God's self image, and this is why God really stressed with me. And He said, "Robin, do it is not sufficient enough for one book to put it in one book about the healing of the soul." And I said, "God, explain more." He said, "If man was created in My image." And it is going to take all of eternity for man to even know God. It is profane to put in one book the image of mankind. And I said, okay, God, you got it. And that is when he got me to do the 24 workbook series of God's Father, All Hell and the Soul, which actually I had 27 of them to be done. So they're all coming in Jesus' name. And this is what God showed me. That we are multifaceted like a diamond because God is multifaceted. So there are different aspects to us. There are different facets. And so if we have been exposed to, we have memories, we have experiences that have been exposed to darkness. It is shut off and it is a dark place. And the visitation of the light has not come. But how many of you know Luke 11 that you keep asking, you keep knocking, and you keep a seeking, and you will find, and He will hear you, He will answer you, and He will open the door. That is what we see after the daily bread scripture 
of the model prayer in Luke 11 of the Lord's Prayer and the parable of the bread that comes after that, that the bread is given as much as he needs. And then scripture says, as Jesus says, ask, keep on asking, seek, keep on seeking, knock, keep on knocking. And the what? The door will be opened and my father will pour out the Holy Spirit. So within our person, where there has been relationship of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil that has led to darkness, we have to eat the word. We have to be accountable for this body, its emotions, and what we allow it to stay in, what we allow it to feel. And we have to be in control. And as we keep holding on to that word, and we keep seeking God, we keep asking God, and we keep knocking in that area of our soul where there is darkness, He will open the door and He will flood it with His light, with His friendship, with relationship in the hidden place of Christ. Woo! Now watch this. Because where do we see this in Scripture? We see it in Micah 7. Micah 7, 8. Micah 7, 7 and 8. I absolutely love this. This is one of my core Scriptures where I share it in my book where God revealed to me as we saw in Nehemiah 1, where Holy Spirit is comforter, He's consoler, He brings peace. Where does He bring peace? To your chaos, your dark place. That place in your subconscious where you feel like you are double personalities. You don't know. There's maybe two of you. You don't understand why you do this one day and you do this the other day. And it is where God brings glory, friendship, visitation, the image of His nature to your self-image in that dark place because you have held on to his word you've not denied his name so he visits you in that place amen now let's look at micah 7 7 through 8 and this brings about a greater revealing and understanding of that context in scripture amen but as for me i will look to the lord and confident in him Woo! I will look to the Lord. So what is your part? Look to God. Don't look to yourself to deliver yourself. Don't look to man. Don't look to woman to deliver you. My deliverances have come from God and God alone. That is why I am passionate like I am. And they've all been supernatural experiences that have defied all of science. And that is why I'm passionate Because I know the power. I've tasted the power of the age to come. I've tasted the power of the advocate, of the consoler, of the comforter. And I have felt that peace and friendship has invaded me. Hallelujah. And I have the knowledge of that glory and it has transformed me in Jesus' name. Woo! Now listen to these scriptures because these are going to be two scriptures. I'm telling you, if you want to cling to two scriptures in your transformation process as a bond servant, these are two you want to write down and you want to do these every day. Amen. Micah 7, 7 through 8. But as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in Him. I will keep watch. Woo! I'll keep watching. I'll keep seeking. I'll keep asking. I'll keep knocking. I'm not going to stop. Amen. I will keep watch. I will wait with hope. Woo! I will wait with hope an expectancy because that is going to be your part and we'll get into that in the next in the next thing in the next session amen i will wait with hope and expectancy for the god of my salvation hallelujah my god will hear me Woo! now listen to this scripture again it's so powerful but as for me my job this is my requirement this is my accountability amen i will look to the lord And confident in Him, I will keep watch. I will wait with hope and expectancy for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Woo! Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, not if I sit in darkness, but when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light. Woo! To me, he shall be friend. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Do you hear this, saints of God? Oh, my goodness. 
Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a friend. Woo! The Lord shall visit me. He won't run from my darkness. He is the God of darkness. He visits it with John 1, 5, where the light pierces the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. It cannot put it out. It is unreceptive to it. Hallelujah. He visits your darkness. Why? Because you look to Him. You look to Him and you don't medicate your darkness. You don't medicate it. You celebrate truth. You celebrate freedom. You celebrate that you're being transformed from glory to glory. That it might look like we're here today, but glory to God. I have hope. I have expectancy. My healing is coming. My deliverance is coming. My freedom is coming. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo! Oh my goodness. I have a feeling this bond servant series is going to be the best to come. Woo! Just get ready, get buckled up, and let's go for this ride in Jesus' name. And I pray that you keep asking, you keep seeking, you keep knocking, and that you know Holy Spirit as comforter, as consoler, that He is with you to soothe you. He doesn't forsake you. He doesn't leave you. He is with you in your darkness, and He brings the light of the friendship of God in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Amen. I'll see you Thursday.